Good morning, friends. So glad you could join me today. We're gonna to do a batch prep of a couple different types of uh, toaster size waffles that the kids can enjoy through the week. As always, our recipes are gluten-free, but they can easily be made with regular gluten all-purpose flour. It's a one-to-one -one substitution. So don't let my using a gluten-free flour blend deter you from following along and seeing what we're up to today. First up, I need to get a gallon of our farm fresh raw real milk separated and ready to use because it's kind of hard to pour out of these giant jars. So let's get that done and then we'll start on our recipes today. Hopefully the sun's not too bright coming in here. I do have the shade down, but as you know, sometimes the sun just is brighter than the shade can handle and we still get some overflow. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that fan off. It's a little bit of background noise. I have some water coming to a boil so that we can melt our butter in some hot water. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get that turned off too. So the first thing I do is make sure that it's all shook up and the cream is mixed in well. We don't want to lose any of the delicious cream. Julia just brought me some eggs. She's out with the chickens. This one had a little crack in it. She was very concerned about that. I don't know if you can see here. We will, it's not cracked to the membrane. I'll go ahead and just crack this open and probably scramble it up and give it back to them. Um, but when it's not cracked to the membrane, another option, sometimes I just crack them open into a jar and keep them in the refrigerator to use again. This egg is much too large for my recipe this morning. It's like a jumbo sized egg. Um, and because I have a very specific method I use for my waffle recipe. I don't want to mess it up with a larger egg. Okay, now after the little egg distraction, let's get to our milk. Uh-oh, this one's going to be hard to open because it has been in the refrigerator for a bit and sometimes the cold refrigerator tightens that lid down so much it's really hard to open. Let's see if my gripper will help. Oh yeah, got it. See, there is a little bit of cream on that lid. Delicious. All right, so I always use my canning funnel for this. Helps reduce waste of milk. Oh my gosh, this is so rich and creamy. I'm gonna shake it a bit more because there's still some cream stuck around the top and I really don't want to lose that cream. Whoops, I overfilled it. Julia is standing by eagerly anticipating some fresh milk this morning. We're going to go ahead and got our mason top on with our handle and I'll pour her a glass and then she'll finish up her morning tasks. Okay, I'm going to keep this one out to use. I got to let this one go down a bit before I cap it because we don't want it to spill all over and I'll put that one in the refrigerator. I usually use just reusable, um, they are plastic lids as well, so that I don't have to use the lid and band. Um, however, there was no wide mouth ones left in my um, drawer right now. They're probably being washed. Okay, let's get on with the recipe. The first thing I'm going to do is get our butter ready to be melted. And because I don't like to use the microwave, I just put my butter into a little glass dish and I will put it into some boiling water so it'll melt while I start mixing things up. I'm actually doing a triple batch of our recipe today. That way we will have some waffles to get through the rest of the weekend. It's only Friday, but it's good Friday, Easter Friday, and um, it's going to be a pretty busy weekend. So if I get things ready now, that will help. And then Possibly we'll have some to last us in the next week. It's kind of variable on how fast these kids gobble up all of their um, their waffles. Sometimes I do this on a pan on the stovetop, but 
I had already been boiling the water and I just thought this will just make it easier. I might have put a little too much in there. I don't want to overfill and have it go into the butter. Okay, so it's just going to sit in the mug with hot water around it and melt while I get started here. And again, for this recipe, I'm just going to use the King Arthur's gluten-free measure for measure one-to-one uh, -one substitute flour. This one is great for baking with um, quick breads, but not for like risen yeasted breads or sourdoughs. It doesn't work as well with those. It do does have xanthan gum in it, um, but this one does not contain wheat starch. We avoid gluten-free wheat starch in our house. Just the other day, Amazon had these on sale for a really good buy. They were $7 and change for the three pound bag. Usually they're about $8.50 or so, so it was maybe another dollar off. And I love to save some pennies. So I ordered a few. Sale means stock up. That's one of our tricks for always being able to save money is stocking up when we find a good deal. So my waffle recipe is a one to one to one is what I call it recipe. My daughters have it memorized because it's so simple. We use one cup of flour to one egg and everything else comes into one, one teaspoon, one tablespoon, so that they never really have to question what goes in it. It's pretty straightforward. However, I'm making a triple. So I'm going to put in three cups of our flour blend. It's a pretty forgiving recipe, so I don't worry too much. I'm gonna have my helpers over here put away things. So since it's a triple, I would put in three tablespoons of sugar. I have this fancy stainless steel one and a half tablespoon measurer from the set my daughter got me at Christmas that are stainless steel odd size measuring spoons. So I'll do two of those to make three tablespoons. Now I've made these without the sugar as well. You really don't have to add it, but if you think you might enjoy them without syrup on them and just want them kind of sweet on their own, it gives a nice little chain, um, little break to the, I don't know what word I'm looking for. It just makes it a little bit tastier on its own where you don't feel so much like you have to add things to it. Okay, so for our baking powder, we typically also use a tablespoon per batch. I found that this gives it nice rise. It might be a little bit overkill. If you're using a gluten-filled regular all-purpose flour, you probably could cut that in half and it would be fine. It's just a little extra security with the gluten-free when we don't have the gluten present to help it rise. We keep our recipe over here on the refrigerator in handwritten form because my daughter makes it so often. We just keep it in case she needs reference and she has it in a double and a triple ratio over here. Okay, we're gonna just put in, usually I say a sprinkle of salt for one or a dash or a pinch of salt, however you wanna call it. I do have a pinch measuring cup but I'm actually gonna go with about a half teaspoon since I'm tripling it. Did I see a pinch measuring cup? A pinch measuring spoon. Okay, so that's our very simple dry ingredients. I failed to get my whisks out when we started here, so I'm gonna get that. I'm just gonna combine our dry ingredients really quickly. And I'll make a little bit of a well in the middle. I'll take our wet ingredients. Now, typically I do a cup of milk per batch. However, as most of you probably know, if you make waffles or pancakes, um, the amount of liquid you need is going to vary. So what I do is I start with part of that and then I will increase as needed because if I start with the full amount and it ends up being too liquidy because let's say it's more humid today or something is different in how I measured my my flowers then it's harder to correct that but if I start with less liquid I can always increase the liquid and it will be great 
So I'm going to start with two cups instead of three in my bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and get this. So oh, no, I'll leave it. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the fridge right away because we don't like to leave it out on the counter with the milk, but I'm still going to be using it. So we will go ahead and keep it out. The egg. So I always crack one egg at a time in a separate dish. Now my mom taught me this growing up and we had store-bought eggs. So it's something we always did, but we still do it with our own home eggs because sometimes you get what's called like a meat spot or a protein spot or a little blood spot in your egg. It's not a big deal. You could eat it that way if you want. It's just part of the process of making eggs. Store eggs can have them too. They have a really light shell. So it's a little bit easier when they're candled coming through the store or not the store, but through the factory for them to tell if the egg looks like it might have a spot or not. Our shells are super dark. They are hard to see through. So not that it matters, but that's what we do. Okay, I add a little bit of vanilla. Now you can measure this at the one teaspoon per batch. I'm never a huge fan of actually measuring vanilla because it's just delicious. So I just kind of do a little glug. And then the last liquid we need is our six tablespoons of butter, which is just about all melted here. Oops, I'm holding it up too high for the camera. So this melts very nicely. I'm going to let it sit just another minute while I whisk up. Our liquids here. Now I have done this before where we just kind of pour it into the flour and we don't combine the liquids first and it still works. But the nice thing about combining the liquids first is we tend to get a less lumpy batter. We don't have to work quite as hard to get it to mix up. If you're in a rush though, I've done it both ways, not a big deal. And this is a really quick recipe. It's just that when I'm filming and showing how to do it, everything takes like 10 times as long as real life. So if this seems to be taking a while, don't let that daunt you because really it's not that bad. Okay, so now we're gonna start whisking in our liquids. Hopefully you can see there. I probably should have put my apron on. I try to wear aprons. Sometimes I forget. I have an awesome helper over here that is doing the morning dishes. So pardon the noise that it's picking up. I don't want to tell her not to do the dishes because it's awesome that she jumped in to do them. Um, but it does add some background noise. Hopefully that's okay. If you're a mom, you totally understand and you don't want to turn down a good helper. All right. Now I didn't pour my melted butter directly into my milk and eggs because um, if it's too cold, the butter can actually like chunk back up. So this way it's not too cold because it's been mixed with my dry ingredients. And I'm just going to go ahead and whisk it in. and get it fully combined. And now this is very batter-like, right? This is probably too thick for waffles, definitely too thick for pancakes. If you were gonna use this recipe to make pancakes, that would be your only difference is how much liquid you add. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on adding our second cup, or our, sorry, our third cup of milk. in about half of it and I'm going to give it a good mix and we'll see where we're at. Now I do have a stand mixer. I certainly could have done this in the stand mixer. It's not really that hard to whip it up by hand. So usually our waffles and pancakes we just do by hand. If you have a good blender like we have a Vitamix, you also can mix up your batter in the Vitamix or the blender um, jar which is super easy. 
Okay, so I went ahead and put in that full cup of, third cup of milk here. And I'm just going to get that all combined. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. I think this is about perfect for waffles. See how smooth and beautiful that is? It is really good. It has a nice, slightly sweet vanilla smell to it. I'm going to put a few things in the sink to get them out of the way here. Okay, now the fun part is some mix-ins. I'm going to pour part of this back into my liquids bowl to use that to mix in some goodies. Now I was pondering doing three, but I actually think I might only do two. So girls, raspberry or strawberry? Mm, raspberry. That's why I was leaning toward was raspberry. You want strawberry? Okay, so I guess I am doing all three. Let me get another bowl. There's one A little bit over there. I feel like I want to kind of make sure that we separate the batter fairly evenly. It doesn't really matter too much. This one had that tiny bit of residual liquid in it, so I'm just mixing it in. Yep, I think this is good. Okay, so I just have some freeze-dried strawberries, freeze-dried raspberries, and I also have some chocolate chips. I seem to not enunciate chocolate well when I am doing a video. I noticed that when I was um, editing and I have no idea why. So chocolate chips, is that better? I'm gonna use my little mortar and pestle. I actually use this a lot for our daughter who's tube fed for her medications um, and supplements so that they get um, crushed. I can put them through the tube easily but it's useful for so many things. And since I'm doing kind of a small amount, but I want the berries kind of broken up. I don't necessarily want big old chunks. Now I could have just, I could have just put them in a bag and crushed, like, you know, hit them a few times. I could have broken them a bit with a fork or by hand. Um, lots of options. I just decided to do it this way because it's what I had available. Okay. So now all of our raspberry bits are more in bits instead of big old pieces. And pour that into one. I'm going to give this a wipe out just so that we don't share flavors. We'll do the strawberries here. Now these are both freeze dried from Thrive Life, which if you remember, I recently had said I was a consultant with Thrive Life. It's an awesome way to get long-term food storage um, so we can avoid, you know, shortages. Who knows what's coming with like this recent bridge takeout when I mean, you just don't know how things are going to be affected. Having pantry storage, long-term food storage is super important to the well-being of everybody's family, no matter how much food you produce yourself. I just think it's a good idea. And I have found, I've tried several brands of freeze dried foods. Um, the Thrive Life ones do taste better. There's our strawberries. So I will have my link again in the description in case you want to check it out. Um, something to please keep in mind, if you are going to order Thrive Life, I would love it if you order through my link. Um, it helps our family earn some more discounts on our food products. Um, you also can earn referral credit once you've set up a customer account. For the chocolate chips, chocolate, see I did it again, chocolate. Chocolate chips, I am just putting in a couple handfuls. We're gonna stir everything up. Um, so my, my personal Thrive Life is, um, if you just type in your HTTP, see, I can't even talk. If you just type in your HTTPS, you know, colon, backslash, backslash, it's allergyprepper.thrivelife.com. And I'll put that up here. It'll also be in the description box. 
please make sure it says you are shopping with Jamie Peterson. That will help make sure that I get some credit if you decide to order and you'll be set up there, set up your account so that you can start sharing your referral link from that customer account and start earning some referral credit yourself, which who doesn't want to earn discounted or free food? We all need food. Okay, so I don't want to like whisk this all in because I don't want to contaminate from one to the next. So the strawberries, I'm just going to gently fold in here. Okay, now it's just gently folded in. And then I'm going to get one more to stir this one. Let's go with a bigger spatula. Delicious looking. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay, so now the fun part. We're going to cook these. Okay, so you all know I have this thing about being crunchy, not using anything that has nonstick, etc. This is our one exception, and there's a couple reasons why this is our exception. Number one is with a cast iron waffle maker, um, you can only use it when you're, you know, with your regular cooktop. Because we are a gluten-free family due to celiac, we travel with cooking devices. Traveling with just a cooktop cast iron isn't going to work for a lot of our travel. Um, not to mention size when you're flying, etc. It's difficult. Um, the number two thing is these are just stinking cute and are really fun. So we do have a collection of them. Um, the nice thing is when I'm batch prepping, I can plug in several. We can just do several at a time so it doesn't have to take forever to make them with one little waffle iron. Um, so let's see, I probably should use my Cricut and like label these That's a spider web. We don't want to make a spider web today. That's a snowman. Eh, it's officially spring. I'm probably not feeling, oh, we have, that's right. I totally forgot. We ended up with two snowmen because I thought we did not have one. This is why I need to label them. And they were like on clearance and we ended up with a second. This is a flower. I'm feeling very, very springy with the flower. We'll go with that one. This one's a gingerbread man. We don't need gingerbread man today. This one's gonna be our pumpkin. This one I know is another Halloween one. It's a ghost. This is our Christmas tree. I think this one's our star. We'll do a star today. And I guess technically our Christmas tree could just be a tree, but it does have a star on top of it. So it's, I mean, it's a Christmas tree. Um, and then I think I have a regular one down here as well. Okay. So for today, we are going to use a regular, no fun pattern, a star, which makes smaller ones, but they're still fun. And then a flower, which makes the full size. It's got the little, I don't know if you can see that on the one side and then the design on the other side. So I'm going to plug these in and get them preheating. And when they're done, we'll start cooking up these guys. Okay, friends, our waffle irons are heated up. They're nice and hot, ready to go. Now, I do use a avocado oil spray. However, mine is out, I guess. I can't find it. It may not be out. It may be that my children put it somewhere. But I'm just going to brush these with butter. They don't need a lot because they are non-stick. Sadly, again, we're gonna ignore that for this treat. I figure since nothing else in our life has any kind of coating, that the once or twice a month we make waffles isn't gonna be the end of the world. That's gonna be my take because while we are as natural as possible, we do recognize we live in a world that has all these advancements and that sometimes we can't avoid them. We just support our bodies as best as possible. And I forgot to grab my little measures. Now, like the little star does best with just like a tablespoon and a half in it. And we're learning this because we've been doing it for a while. They do give the tips in the little book. And if I spread it out, um, it tends to fill in the little star a little better. 
The star one's actually not my favorite because it is a little more complicated. Um, I do like when it has the full outer that we can just make a full size toaster waffle with. And these ones I usually do kind of a scant quarter cup in. And you know, the first couple, they may not be perfect, that's okay. Especially when I've added chunky things to it. And we'll do the chocolate chip over here in this last one. I got a bigger measuring cup, so I'm just going less in it. Um, just because I'm doing the three varieties and don't want to mix them. So, they're going to cook. I'll show you what they look like. I'll keep cooking up the batches, and I'll come back at the end, and you can kind of see what we came up with today. All right, lights are starting to click off. I'll go ahead and take a look. Yep, the star does look good. Wasn't sure because sometimes you have to give them a little longer. Cute and perfect. When I take these out, I cover them with a clean tea towel. It's going to help keep them warm as I fill this cookie sheet up. I've done a couple things to try to fill the star evenly. I've used some of the, the large syringes we used for my daughter's feeding tube. They'll squirt it in there nicely, but you have to refill it frequently. Pastry bags. Um, also, I have one of those pancake squirter bottles. Um, but I've just found they're all kind of a pain and nothing really works super well. And if I'm gonna do any additives like flavors today, they don't work. Oh my goodness, so good. There's our plain one, or not plain, chocolate chip, but in the non-fancy pattern. Okay, they're still cooking away, but the girls have started to eat, and I wanted to show you. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you guys. The chocolate chip is definitely the favorite because it's super sweet. It feels like it's dessert. Chocolate. Yeah, that's really good. But the berries are delicious. They're lighter, so you certainly could add syrup to them. For me, they're plenty sweet because I don't do a lot of sugar, as I've mentioned before. My husband definitely would drown them in syrup because that's how he prefers things. Um, the girls probably could go either way. But anyway, just want a little check-in. We'll come back in a bit. Well, friends, our waffles are done. The kids have eaten. We've consumed about six of them, and I'll show you what we have left. So our flowers are strawberry. Our stars are the raspberry. They've all got a little bit of excess because that's how the stars cook. And then we have just the circular chocolate chip. We have about seven, um, six, 10, 17, and then about 13 stars. So we have about 30 total. Obviously the stars are small. The kids already ate today, so it made a pretty good batch. They probably, a single batch will probably make 10 to 12 this size based on, um, maybe not quite, maybe it's more like eight per batch, but the stars, you know, obviously made more. So that is our delicious, um, easy to make freezer waffles. Cute, delicious, various flavors. Get you through a week, prep it on the weekend, and you're good to go. You can put these in, let them cool completely put them in a freezer bag or a freezer dish. We use like the Pyrex rectangular dishes. Um, you can put some parchment in between them and you can reuse that. So don't throw it away each time. Pop them out, toast them up really quick in like 30 seconds in the morning. Spread them with some butter if you want. You can even eat them in the car if you're running out the door. There is no excuse to buy processed food, you guys. Um, these taste way better than those boxed ones. And you know how they say, Lego my ego? Mm -mm. I'm going to say Lego, my homemade gluten-free chocolate chip mini dash waffle. That's what we're going to call them. That's a lot of names, but that's okay. So a good Friday to you guys.
As we approach Easter, I hope that you feel the presence of the sacrifice of our Lord with you, that you stop and think today about his journey to the cross. And while today is an incredibly sad day, we know that Easter is coming. Blessings upon your day, friends, and stay prepared. <laughs>